hear me? Perfectly. Can you hear me? Yeah, certainly can, mate. I love the tats. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, awesome, man. Sorry, yeah, I was just doing some final adjustments. Of, I've had this burst of energy because we've got a new guest judge. I love the background, by the way. This is perfect. This is the oh, best okay. setup so far. <laughs> is it? Oh, good. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you get extra points for that. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, but, you know, go right ahead if you need a drink or something. That's fine. Cheers. Cheers yeah. to you. I'll raise a glass of orange juice. Ready? There you go. Uh, we just confirmed. Uh, we'll we'll ch- we'll start all about that. You're filming in just a sec. We just confirmed a new guest judge, and uh, oh, mate, it's so exciting! It's so exciting. I feel oh, like you guys, you guys, your list is or like you, you're you know you you've got some uh, you got some surprises down the pipe here. This is pretty cool, man. Yeah. Uh, so we uh, did you obviously you saw the Vance Burberry uh, judge awards? So yes, we, yeah, and that fella's been. He's been doing uh, work with everyone under the sun. Does yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's he was ta- we we've got a forty five minute podcast with him, an audio podcast because he's based in LA, in LA, teaching underwater cinematography theory at the moment. Ah. Uh, because he just worked with Garth Brooks on a music video, so it was like, wow, he's being directed by Garth Brooks in an earpiece whilst he's underwater. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm a massive country music fan too, so that's huge. Well, there you go. That. Yeah, he was talking about that. Uh, working oh, with Garth and all, because you know Garth's like the biggest, isn't he? Now? Oh, he's he's legendary, man. Yeah, he's he's historic. He's, and yeah, if you, he, he, as far as like the like eighties, nineties, and 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 even modern country, he's like the yeah, he's like the godfather of country. So of uh, yeah, we're we're incredibly proud to have him all on board. And the, re, the one of the reasons we kind of where I saw him because I'm such a big Black Magic fan of the camera, right? The, the company as a whole in terms of their approach and their not their shipping dates though, <laughs> which is shocking. <laughs> but um yeah so i contacted him and he was like yeah great send me over five send me over a few films and i'll judge said great and then we chatted for 45 minutes the coolest thing though that he's worked on he worked on the restoration of jaws oh that's amazing and he worked on what was it 1931 dracula the restoration of that so i'm like he was telling me on the podcast he was the audio thing will be released this week hopefully uh, he was telling me about handling the original negative or the the negatives from those prints. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> Imagine the responsibility going through, causing through your veins. Yeah, you just think about it. It's like, okay, this is like, my, this is like a life or death, life or death situation right now. I've got a lot of responsibility. That'd be that'd be quite nerve wracking, but also incredibly like an incredible honor, you know? Yeah. So uh, the most exciting thing was like watching films films like yours. And all the other films we've received, it's, I, I see it as a, a privilege receiving all of these films. No matter what the quality is, they've, they've made the effort to do it. And to, because we're all going through such a crazy time and even more so, more crazy in the last two weeks, especially in the US. And just to, just to give it people an outlet, uh, a focus of creativity, it's been great. And obviously you guys have got the ISFF over there as well. So it's been it's been an interesting time, and thank you very much, Ian, uh, for being on the podcast. First, uh, mostly. Oh, absolutely, my pleasure, Alex. Thanks for having me, man. Um, I'm just just stoked to be here, dude. Stoked to chat with you, and I'm glad my tech is working. I wasn't. I would be lying to you if I told you I wasn't up nights trying to figure out the best way to do this. So I'm glad my tech is working yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, tech, yeah. Like Zoom had me over a barrel to a certain degree for the first couple of uh, interviews I did. And it was awful. What is going on with this service? And then what I do is I compress the video and the video is compressed out by Zoom. And then I replace my shot with my black magic shot. Right. Uh, so I film it just off camera to, to where you are. Right. And, uh, but your shot is great, which I'm loving. <laughs> okay, cool. Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm always, uh, I'm always stoked to hear that I'm, you know, I'm helping fellow camera people and tech people as well. So that's always nice to know. I always try to, I strive for, for, I'm, I've been an audio producer for, gosh, I mean, I've been in bands since I, we, we can talk about all sorts of great stuff. I've been, I've been, you know, a musician since I was, I can really remember as a teenager and I've been doing music production for 15 years. And um, so for me, it's, it's like, it's not, uh, it's not okay to not have good audio. So I'm obsessed oh, with audio. So. <laughs> and that, that's something I'm going to bring up is that we don't have a, as yet, we don't have a best sound award. And obviously at the Oscars, you've got editing, sound effects, sound editing. And I'm going to try and push because there's, there's only three of us that are doing all of this. 
So there's no one else. There's no big spot, big sponsors or anything, possibly next year uh, with the involvement we've having now. Uh, but that's something a lot of the other filmmakers I've t- uh, chatted to uh, have kind of hit upon is that it's 50% of, of the, of the immersion of content. Like when I, me and my partner, when we watch films, one of the first things when we have the house redone is we're going to put speaker cable everywhere in this room because if, we, if we're buying an OLED TV, why aren't we listening to it at the highest possible quality? If we've yeah. got the facility to have that sound or listen to it properly as the mixer intended, because it would be like, if you watched Apocalypse Now, you're, you're doing Walter Murch a massive disservice oh, yeah, by, lo- by lo- not listening to his three years of work. You know, that's how I, that's how I approach it. It's just out of, purely out of respect. And um, it's like when I started to make short films or produce uh, corporate content, it was all of my kind of piracy or anything like that. It just went out the window because I finally understood what it was to respect that. And I know, you know, uh, and the amount of work that goes in at the highest level and, and those people that work at the lowest level within huge production. So yeah, I just found a new fan respect for sound and picture years ago. And now it's, uh, and like, there's some really, really well-made films in this. And uh, it's, it's just giving them the respect. So we're doing editing, we're doing best film, uh, Vance's cinematography award. Uh, now we found that we found the new judge and it got confirmed like half an hour ago. And I'll tell you, you what, think, if you think quite giddy, this is awesome. I'm, I'm exceptionally giddy. I'm going to tell you who it is. I'm going to, this is a little secret that's going to be released on Friday. So if you can keep this to your to self to a certain degree, it's, Absolutely. Uh, it's a company called the uh, director's duo. Now the director's duo, uh, there's a sequence in Ant-Man that they created the entire thing for. Oh, uh, okay. I think it's, I've. I, I think have I've you heard of them it. before? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have. Like I, vaguely, but as soon as you said Ant Man, like yeah. They did the. You know when the yellow jacket is like they have that conference at the headquarters of the technology, and the yellow jackets announced. They did all the CG and all of that work. Oh, that is some insane work. Too. That's some of the most. Historic, yeah. I feel, like, in, in, in all those uh, comic series films. That's a, that's a pretty historic moment, too. And, and yeah, like, and th- on their website, they talk about uh, working with Kevin Feige and uh, um, Peyton Reed. I'm like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And that's really just, cool, man. Well, congratulations. Just, uh, uh, no, I appreciate that. So they're probably going to ju- – I don't know. It's difficult, and I've not said which category to them yet, but they're, they're stoked. So initially, I was going to ask them to try and produce a film, but it was like, you know – nine and possible they're working on a bmw advert as we speak so it's not like yeah can you produce this would you be interested (laughs) (laughs) so initially i was thinking you know uh, much broader much bigger for the festival but we're trying to make more of a community with filmmakers and uh actors and um audio engineers that kind of thing across the board so yeah it's incredibly exciting man and they've their showreels unreal like there's a there's a panasonic advert for oled where it's a woman in a space suit that's running across this thing where meteorites, meteorites are hitting her from behind and she's running. They did all of that. I'm like the work that their work is incredible. So we're just very stoked. And I would just be bouncing off the walls about it. You know, that's amazing, man. That's fantastic. And like the likes of Vance, I told my brother, who's a huge Guns N' Roses fan. Oh yeah. He, he, uh, he was the cinematographer. He shot all the stuff for Sweet Child of Mine. I was like, he was like, what? Yeah, that's, that's epic. I mean, like, Appetite for Destruction was probably one of the first ca- the cassettes I owned. I was 11 or 12 at the time. And yeah, just even from an audio side, but I can, I, I can just as much respect because their videos were banging too. So that's so cool. Yeah, where videos kind of meant more in a lot of ways because it's so like, I tell you, there's a, there's a lot of great music videos now, but because before, you know, M- before MTV really died, it, music videos were a huge calling card for the music absolutely and it was it it wasn't the i mean you know on the flip side of things too the things we can achieve now with with dslrs and digital cam and i did a i was on a tv show that i was on i was for four seasons and the and the first season i was on and and the a little bit of the second season they were still shooting film stock and this was 2005 so like to think and then they shifted all over to sony red and then but i remember at the time just being like 
watching the the transition shift and you think about music videos like filmed like that in the 80s and stuff like that's all film and you know like that it's dailies they had to watch they had to watch and dailies used to take you know a certain amount of time to process so they could actually watch the dailies whereas like when you watch digital dailies you can watch them within seconds and it's just the the, the times they have changed but man if you can if you can go back and really understand some of that past film history and the film itself like actual photography film it's it's really cool and and, and you could even appreciate even the way like um colors and, and and shades like blacks and grays are developed differently on films versus where they are they're getting much better in digital now but there's that that digital phase where where lots of dark colors uh blacks grays and all these things they would break up and you know in digital world but in film where it never did that's why you could shoot something so dark in film because the the blacks would always be yeah. closed nicely and just so creamy whereas in the digital world everything especially near the beginning there it was you had to be lit and overlit because it was just the you know processors couldn't deal with it as much and obviously we're getting way better every minute every hour absolutely every, yeah it's just cool to see the the film progression and happy to have been part of you know watch film turn into digital and also That's you know, a, they, the yeah. too so yeah yeah because then you have a great i think you do have a better understanding like even shooting 35 millimeter film now it gives you it kind of forces you a lot more to <clears throat> to get more in the camera and less in post Absolutely. And uh, the worst, you know, like when I shot stuff and go, ah, yeah, I'll, my attitude years ago was, oh, let's let's just shoot what we can and get it in post and sort it there. Yeah. And, uh, you can probably do a lot more in post now than than then, but I think that you've got to like, you know, any half decent filmmaker or anyone that approaches it, you want to like mastering audio, you want the best out of it straight away. You don't want to kind of overly process something, unless you, if you've set everything right initially. It's the same with it's the same with sound. It's the same with picture. If you can get the best recording straight away, then you're on to a winner. You know, uh, straight out the gate, aren't you? Yeah, there's a saying. I don't know if I if I I won't I won't technically swear in the podcast. I don't know That's if you fine. Guys... You can go right ahead, mate. There's there's a saying. I'm sure you've heard it in the audio world, and it's I'm sure it's the same the same in the film world. But uh, they say shit in, shit out, right? So yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That was like my pizza scenario yesterday. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I was about. I watch. Uh, I spoke to uh, Katisha Shaw, an actress based in Canada, and we were talking about Hellraiser, and she was saying her dad showed her Hellraiser when she was like five or six years old. <laughs> oh, man! And, 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 and she's a massive horror nerd. And I was like, "Yeah, you're in right company here," because I'm a huge horror fan. And I was about to watch. Uh, we were about to watch Hellraiser last night. We ordered pizza from Papa John's. Now, I love Papa John's. You know, there's obviously there's lots of other pizza outlets, but. Uh, when I had it, it was a massive food coma. Honestly, it, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. I was, <laughs> I was on the couch like this. I thought something had really seriously happened. I went to bed super early because I'm in my towel. And it was, it was crazy, man. So, yeah, I don't know what my point is, but that, uh, you know, it's... Uh, do, you, do you think maybe it had something to do with the... I mean, you guys seem to be putting in a lot of hours to this thing. And maybe, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. it was an exhaustion versus pizza versus carbohydrates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the the like this is going i think i think the podcast i really enjoy the process and being able to speak to filmmakers and getting some real insights and in of how they shot how they work what they're doing how their lives are you know because isolation is a crazy thing it's probably a large part of the reason I have that food coma was just like over excitement i've just talked to someone about hellraiser great you know what i mean yeah, that is cool man it's actually so in that, in that level too, someone watching when they're six. I, my dad showed me the movie Predator when I was, I think, eight. And uh, to the day, it's like that meme, to the day, um, I, uh, I still, A, a I'm scared of it, and B, will never forget trying to sleep for like a week after that. And I think my dad kind of regretted showing me that. He probably shouldn't have showed me at eight years old, but it was still a fantastic film now as it was then. But yeah, it scared the crap out of me. Yeah, look at the, like, the cinematography in that film. If you want to know how to... Uh, show how to put groups of actors together in one shot and have them staggered. And Yander Bont, uh, I think it was Yander Bont, the DP. You've got the, uh, oh God. Oh my God, the director's name did Die Hard as well. Um, oh yeah, I've heard director names by Oh that. my God, that's killing me. Uh, Jay, um, John McTernan. So he did, he did Predator and within a couple of years or either way, he did Die Hard. <laughs> It's like uh, um, really Scott Alien and Blade Runner. You know right. what I mean? It's like there's some sort of like uh, magic uh, Kool Aid they're drinking at that point. 
<laughs> I think yeah, they get into a flow, right? And a rhythm, I think. And then you see some of those films. I, I find that, I found that with David Fincher, um, with like uh, Seven in Fight Club and stuff. And you just got into this, like, this groove, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was, and I mean, I, I'm, a, I've always been a Brad Pitt fan. And there's, I know there's the, obviously he's a superstar and there's people who think he's great. People who think he's whatever. And some people probably think he's not that great of an actor or what have you. I, I think, especially in his older years, he's getting better and better too, with once upon a time Hollywood. And, I but, totally um, agree. Yeah. I, uh, I fight club and, and seven are some of my absolute favorite thrillers. Well, fight club being more, I guess an action sort of dark action thriller, but seven being one of my absolute favorite top, it's probably like my top thriller for sure. Yeah, it like that film in the rain. Oh my god! What's in the really, box? What's yeah, in the yeah. box? <laughs> he makes he makes just his visual style is incredible. Yeah. Um, and it's been a little bit hit and miss for me in terms of uh, his more recent stuff, but it's still very, very, very good. And I really yeah, watched, I don't even know. I don't even know if I've uh, seen Zodiac. I actually didn't see Zodiac, and I know that it's unreal. So or it friend. is very good. It, only a couple of shots look like digital because I think it is digital, and right. uh, but it's it's such a fine line now between digital and film. It's get yeah, of, like we said earlier, it's getting more and more uh, closer to 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 yeah. Food and yeah, it's yeah. Anyway, he's, I mean, he's got an exceptional, massive, potentially his film for best director coming out with Gary Oldman in the lead. It's called, I think it's called Mank. Have you heard of this? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you, you're making a film about the writer of Citizen Kane. Yeah, it's going to be massive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that's... I'm, I'm super excited about that because it, I don't know if he's ever been nominated. Was it Social Network possibly was nominated for? I don't think he won because uh, obviously, oh yeah, you'll love this. I've got a little, uh, is it one degree of separation from David Fincher? Because I met in the same week I met Rihanna where I worked, she bought oh. tickets for her and her friends in Manchester. I used to work at cinema. Uh, Trent Reznor came in and oh. was performing at the MEN. And I didn't recognize him. This, this pissed me off forever. So, and he wrote her, my favorite song. Obviously his, I think his version is inferior to the Johnny Cash one because Johnny Cash, because he was dying at you know, the end of his career, uh, it was a perfect scenario. So I served him. It's like a really stocky guy, but he had the short hair. That's what threw me. Okay. He had the really short hair. And a friend yeah. next to me turned to me like this. Do you know who that was? You just said, I said, no, Trent Reznor. I said, what the fuck? Oh. The funniest thing is, I think it was 300 or something like that. There was a trailer. I can't remember the year, but the tra I know the trailer. In the film he was watching in this particular screen, I think it was in screen 12 or whatever. He... His music was in one of the trailers in the, in one of the films he was watching. Uh -huh. So I'm like, yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. And yeah, uh, it was a bit of a surreal week. And I was devastated because I would have thanked him for his music. You know, what uh, I mean? so, I'm, you know what, man, I'm I'm sure you're, you you seem like you got a great energy anyway. I'm sure he was just stoked to. Oh get, yeah, get his soda and get whatever you served you his popcorn or whatever you served him. Yeah, he was just. Uh, now I sold him his tickets, and Rihanna was in full denim with a denim hat. And she, there's a strange thing is she had like 10 friends with her but she was the one that came up to pay do you know what i mean so you can say yeah. that there's not less of that bullshit with some of those people which is great yeah. man and trent was performing with uh, nine inch nails i think it was the night before so he must he must have been or the night after so he must have been the night before his performance and yeah it was just kind of cool to just to feel the energy you know what i mean oh absolutely especially the presence like like trent Reznor. i mean and then even rihanna my it's funny my wife my wife, uh, we're, we're photographers. She's been a photographer for like, it's been her only career. And she's, um, she got to uh, photograph. Uh, she did a lot of music stuff in, in her past. She used to do award shows here in Canada. Like the, we've, we've done an award show called the Juno Awards. It's, it's like our, it's our music award show we do in Canada. And then um, <clears throat> we have, um, we had, we used to have this thing called the Genie Awards and it turned into the, like the Actra Actor Awards. But um, the Junos are a pretty big event they do every year and uh, Aaron got to shoot it one year that's my, my wife is Aaron she uh, she actually got to photograph just before the Junos the um, Rihanna was doing a performance kind of like a smaller this is when she's brand oh, new like more intimate yeah I think she was 18 and um, oh, wow. she may have even been 16 to be honest with you 17 18 19 ish she was at the 16 19 era but uh, she's got some amazing pictures of Rihanna, just like this teenager. It's so cool, man. Back from oh, wow, that's incredible. Is your wife's work uh, available online to view? Well, uh, not uh, not any of her old stuff. Our our weddings, we're a, we we own a, <laughs> a we own a wedding company, and uh, oh, cool. 
yeah that we we do strictly weddings uh she does strictly wedding photography it's just aaron blackwood photo aaron blackwood.com is the is her website if you want to if you want to fire those across to me then i'm more than happy to put it in a kind of uh description in that as well yeah sure man yeah we uh up until covid we we uh we do about 40 weddings a year until uh wow, now that's great now, this year was uh is everything next year now yeah and yeah it's in in the interim we're just hanging out that's one of the reasons why i made a short film because i thought okay well here's a chance to flex the the filmmaker bone again that i haven't done in a few years because prior to the short film and uh a little bits and pieces i did in my sister's band's videos um she's in a band from canada they're called walk off the earth and um i did a i was the lead actor in one of their most recent singles um and uh, it's, the song's called "I'll Be There." It's a really cool video. S- touches on mental health and stuff like that. Really, we had, we had a lot. Oh of fun. wow! Yeah. So, uh, other than that, though, I'd actually taken about two years off acting because I'd, I'd been acting for almost fifteen years, and I took two years off strictly to just work with the with my wife and do the wedding photography. Just because I ended up finding um, sort of peace and kind of happiness with the with the wedding world. To be honest with you, I had to. That's great. Yeah, if I can be candid, anyway, just take I had to take a break from the film world and. Um, the hustle and bustle of being an actor and, you know, the, 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 the constant rejection and the, the pounding the pavement and the, you know, commuting to Toronto and, you know, in and out of uh, casting houses and stuff, it, it, it can, it can play, play a bit of a, a downer role on in your life and absolutely depending on who you are and depending on how you deal with things. But uh, I needed a break. So I took a break, but yeah, this, this little short film was my sort of uh, kind of coming back, I guess, in, in, a, in a little ways. And just because, you know, we're in a pandemic and, I saw the original, uh, the the, uh, the Toronto in the isolation film yeah. had the submissions go up, and I was like, "Oh, this is a." I actually saw it kind of late. I, I had only about a week and a half or two weeks to the deadline, so I thought, "Okay, I want to, I want to uh, uh, submit for this thing," and uh, yeah, so it, it's just kind of me coming back, and I wanted to throw something together, and yeah, it was a lot of fun doing it. Uh, yeah, you can um, you can tell in a in a, in a lot of ways uh, that you. You sh- you shoot shoot decent video. The very first thing I noticed straight away, without even looking at the story, was, "Oh, this looks great." That's oh, thank the first you. thing I thought. And uh, we'll we'll get back to your film. Just I just want to quickly ask you about your your photography. So you predominantly do uh, photography, and do you do any video at weddings? I do zero video. Now here's what, and I think we can we can this will touch base on exactly what we started talking about at the beginning of the interview. And for me, the reason, the reason I don't do video is sound. So sound at weddings scares the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I, I shoot, I shoot weddings every so often. Cause I've got a, I do a full-time video thing, doing uh, live streams for universities, that kind of thing. And it's, mm-hmm. it's changed a lot at the moment, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, uh, sound at weddings, the amount of doubling up you, you have to do. Like I have a personal recorder. I have. Uh, a wireless set sense of the camera it freaks me out like the best thing is after those speeches the energy drop because obviously i'm shooting the first dance or whatever mm-hmm. i i my body just it's exhausting it's physically exhausting now i shoot i've shot a few um stills weddings here and there one in for a friend of mine in mexico which was unreal because it was mexico it was just fantastic yeah that's and incredible. uh cobbled streets all paint peeling off the buildings that kind of thing you know and um uh, the energy is obviously completely different, but I didn't feel the same level of physical exhaustion. The mental fatigue for doing weddings and more power to you for both of you, it, it, it takes a lot of toll, doesn't it? But as long as you've got the jazz for it. Now, when you come to do stills, how do you, what's the kind of division of work? How does that work? And do you overshoot certain things? How does, how do you work it out with your, with your wife? Okay. Here's the, this is great. We have this argument all the time and it's a pretty good argument. I undershoot because I shoot just like I shoot to edit, just like when I'm filming. I hate having access footage. I can't stand it. I don't see a need for it. I completely understand it, especially with all the respect when it comes to someone else editing your work. Totally get it. Overshoot. Get the shot. Get the shot ten times. You know, get get that coverage. Get those uh, those insert shots you want to get the coverage. Get what you need. When I shoot though, when I know I'm editing, no way. I'm. I'll tell you one of the big things for me was I spent. Like I said before, a lot of time, I spent a lot of years, decades, decade and a half in the music industry. And when you shoot music videos, you're shooting a three minute video and sometimes you're doing 15, 16 hour days. And honestly, man, honestly, a lot of it is 
oh, let's just go again. We got it, but let's go again. And I understand, don't get me wrong, because I'm not, you know, I'm not, not some prick that's like, oh, I have better things to do. It's, I literally just am tired and I don't want to, yeah, I want to yeah. Long. Now I get it. There's, I've done, you know, I've done ads where I'll, I'll be booked three days on a commercial and it's a 30 second commercial. It's hilarious because you, you know, you just worked, you know, 50 hours tallied up in three days and you're on this commercial and, and it's a 30 second spot or 60 second spot. Yeah. It's pretty funny. But anyway, so it, that where my mindset comes is I shoot, I know I've got it. I've got it. My wife, who's actually way smarter than I am, by the way, because she, stu- she, she studied film originally. She studied photography on film. So oh, her, wow, back, great. Her, her aperture, her eye, her everything, her, her, she's got the F-stop shutter and aperture already set with her eyes. She knows, she knows she can calibrate light way better than me. Like I'm still in the digital world where I kind of do the old guess and the old light meter guess where she's like, she can set a camera in seconds. I take, I, I take, much more i take a minute you know so yeah um we we have this argument though because i definitely undershoot now i don't know if it's uh because you know the way it works is on a wedding day we split it up the task obviously she shoots the the bride to be i shoot the groom to be and i shoot all the guys doing the guy things she shoots the women doing the women things and women tend to you know uh do much more they take care better care of themselves they have more makeup to do they have more things to put together whereas the bits and pieces for guys are just like throw some pants on spray some cologne <laughs> it's just like i, I think the, and maybe that's just an energy thing but that's the yeah. way we do it that's the way it works but yeah i definitely <laughs> I, I guess i shouldn't say i undershoot but i i i Efficient, shoot, more efficient, efficient in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like really, there's only so many uh, groom in the mirror getting ready shots you can do. Exactly, ex- exactly. And you know, I, I find too with with with, uh, with brides anyhow, they, they have this. They usually have this sort of like, uh, not to say guys don't have the excitement to take photography. Some guys actually are really stoked. Some guys are okay, and some guys don't really want it. But you've always that's part of the job. You've got to get it out of them, and you've got to be playful and just figure out how you're going to get the pick and get out of the way. Try not to. I always say try not to disrupt the wolf pack. Don't to disrupt disrupt them too much, and just simply photograph the wolf pack in their in their uh, natural behavior. Yeah. But um, with the with the females, I, you tend to find that they're a little more um, like you know a little more flexible with like doing a few more setups and things like that totally so, agree with that know. yeah it's yeah, that that across the board pretty much all my experience of weddings then i'd absolutely agree with that so it's a it's a good balance to have and it must be it must be nice to have that debrief because when i shoot videos mostly on my own and i try and bring it depending on the budget then i'll always bring someone else into for safety so it gives me peace of mind can you go and shoot that so i can have a five minute break or whatever um so it must be nice to have a, a debrief and decompress after a wedding as well. Oh, it's lovely. And I like, you know, with working with you, it's not for everyone. I understand not a lot of people can work with their partners. And um, I, I'd say maybe even, dare I say, probably the majority of the human race maybe doesn't really want to work with their partners. But listen, I've spent, I've had many different, you know, funny careers, different jobs, different gigs, different things, gig economy stuff. And I tell you, I should have been doing this sooner with her because um, I've been doing photography since high school. You know, I, I went to I went to film school for in, in college and for I went for post production, screenwriting, and acting. And we did a little editing and we did a little bit of all that, this, that, and the other thing. So I've always been passionate about it, and I, I love camera anyway. So it was just one of those things where she was like, you know, you really should be working with me. I was like, yeah, that's actually a good idea, especially in the acting world because you audition. Um, in the mornings, afternoons, during the week anyway. Most weddings are on weekends, and if you're doing a shoot chances are you're doing a commercial shoot on a Saturday. And if, if, if you did happen to book the gig, which is, you know, probably one in 25 when you're auditioning professionally in, in, in the, uh, in the rat race, if you are booking one in 25, you, okay, there's a, so there's a pretty small chance you're going to work a Saturday in the film world. If it is find another photographer or, you know, figure it out. But um, yeah, it's, it's something I should have been doing a little while ago, I think, but uh, yeah. I do quite enjoy it. I do really do enjoy the, the, the wedding days, man. It's fun. And the, the food's great. Clients are fantastic. Yeah. That's always fun. Yeah. And <laughs> Like the energy with having uh, uh, a woman as part of your photo crew, it, it's disarming in a lot of ways and people soften up. Oh, yeah. And it's, it, yeah, it's, I think it's, it's a really perfect balance. Most uh, photographers that work as a team that I've met for on other weddings that I've just been to, they, it's, been a, it's been a couple or it's, it's that balance of a guy and a girl. And it, it really does work well and it gives me more confidence and it gives the bride, especially when you go for those initial meetings, mm. it's a, it kind of, I think it helps the bride quite a lot, except you as a photographer and, and want to book you, you know? 
especially if you're doing like 30 weddings a year or something, which is fantastic or 40, whatever you said. So it's, uh, have you found the, I know I don't, I, I'm not sure how much you want to talk about this, but I'm really fascinated by it. Yeah, no, what's, what's your, you don't have to tell me numbers, but what's your, um, what was your kind of percentage shift that there have been okay to shift it to next year? Oh, okay. So yeah, it's, it's been, I mean, it's, it's been a, you know, just a, I'll just say a mess <laughs> um, as we can all agree in, in just as far as rescheduling goes, but our percentage now, like we've lost so far, uh, we, we, I, I shouldn't say lost. We've, we've rescheduled um, like 98%, which has been fantastic. Yeah, I think we great. lost, I think we, we only lost one or two because they went ahead and rebooked, but they didn't ask if we were available. And we actually had already had that date taken for someone who already booked 2021. See, yeah. book, we book about two years in advance. My, my wife, like she's, She's kind of a big deal. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That organization's yeah. amazing. That's what you oh, need. Oh, she's yeah. Like I said, I'm not. Um, I'm, not, I'm not, not. You know, I'm, I'm as humble as they come. I guess, but I guess when people say that, that usually means they're not humble. But um, no, <laughs> but no, I do mean it. I, she's, she's just, she's such a great. She really is one of the, in my opinion. I mean, she's my wife. I'll be, you know, biased. Yeah, but absolutely. Just one of the best uh, photographers in the GTA and in Canada. And if, you know, there's a reason why we shoot this many weddings and. Um, it's, it's not only her, her in extreme talent, her, her personality is fantastic. She's, she's half Italian, half Irish. Um, so she's got this, you know, this, That's this a fiery bubble. mix. Yes, exactly. It's bubbly, fiery. Like she's, but she's, she's commanding when she needs to be, but she's, she's extremely kind. And she, she's always been able to, the, w one of the ways I met her was when, um, through a mutual friend and she was actually, I got her to do headshots for me. And I remember at the time I was like, this photographer is so comfortable. It's just comfortable being around this, this woman, like. She knows how to direct lightly, but she knows how to direct, you know, and, you know, get the point across and not beat around the bush and just get, and they're, they're some of the best headshots I ever had. And I booked a lot of the work from them, most of my work from them. So, I mean, they had all kind of, it all kind of yeah. domino, right? So, yeah. So I was oh, like, I awesome. marry her. So. <laughs> <laughs> so how long after did you ask her out? Uh, no, no, it, I didn't take long. I saw a picture of her and I was like, I have to meet this woman. And then as soon as I did meet her, uh, we had met at a party at, um, God, we, we've been together now for almost 15 years and we've been married for almost 11. Wow. So, that's, yeah. Well, congrats, man. That's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, we met uh, very, it was, uh, it was, at, it was, I, I don't want to say serendipitous. It was, it was a friend that sort of had mentioned it, but I saw this f photograph of this woman. I was like, I have to meet this, this girl. She's, she's beautiful. She's, she was holding a, a Fender Telecaster in this picture. Oh, there you go. There you yeah. go. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm sold. Like, and then I got to meet her at a house party. Long story short, we were seeing people at the, at the time, like uh, seeing other people. So we just sort of like kind of did the old, okay, I'm going to remember you for the next few months and you probably won't leave my thoughts. And then as luck would hit, we, I ended up going to a bar one night um, to go meet up with some friends and, and the, the one young uh, woman who was a mutual friend of ours had mentioned that she was going to be there. And I was like, Oh, maybe just, you know, maybe she'll be, she'll be single this time. And uh, sure enough, she was. So I said, listen, I want to make you back in the day. We used to make mixtapes and mix CDs. I don't know how many young people do that these days, but uh, yeah. I said, I'm going to make you a mix CD. And that was sort of my code for, Hey, do you want to go for a, go, for, go on a date? Sometime? That's good, man. And it's a, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, then that must have been like, did you put a ton of pressure on yourself to pick the right kind of music? You know what, man? I, I'm, I'm, yeah, of course, of course I did. I didn't want to screw it up, but I mean, I had a feeling I kind of knew what she was going to like, and I just picked a bunch of folk stuff. And I think I did some, I think I did like some Neil Young stuff. I think I did some Ryan Adams stuff. I think Amazing. I, um, I think I had some, uh, I had some Death Cab for Cutie on there. I had, I had a bunch of cool, like, you know, two th 2000s, like, type folky. Yeah. Stuff, I, so. uh, I, uh, I saw Neil Young at Glastonbury, I think it was 09 or uh, uh, 2010, and he was playing a guitar, and the shirt was falling off him. So I don't know, why, he must have had it on his shoulders or something, but it was falling off him onto the guitar, and he was still playing, like, and then the, then the, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? The strings, they just broke on the guitar. And he was, it was, it was a very special moment in music for me yeah. because he's so talented. Like oh, he, I, I respect him for trying to do that whole uncompressed music thing you tried to do. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I think the whole analog Neil Young world is, is a world that again, it's just like film. 
I mean, I remember my old bands doing reel to reel tape and, you know, doing records, even in like 2000, 2001, still doing reel to reel tape in studios and stuff. And that whole analog world is an understanding people should have. And I think obviously Neil meant his absolute best. And I respect him. He's, you know, he's a legend. He's, you know, he's, you know, Canadian export and absolutely. He's, he's, he's the man, but um, yeah, I just think, again, it was one of those, I have a funny quote from my, again, my wife's uh, experience in her post-secondary world of, of, of uh, photography. One of her instructors once said, he brought in one of the new, it was, I can't remember if it was a he or she, but uh, they, the, uh, the instructor brought in a camera. It was one of the first digital cameras and he held it up and said, this is digital and this isn't going to work. It's not going to last. And <laughs> okay and then they went back upon the you know back of the, back about their ways of doing you know film and stuff and you know fast forward i don't know how many years later and i'm not going to age my wife on the podcast but um yeah. <laughs> now here we, are, here we are completely in a digital world and i think again it's 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 neil i think neil he, he meant well absolutely and he's not wrong in a sense that he did he does mention a lot about the algorithm in digital music and how it the way it's written is it's technically wrong i don't necessarily disagree with him i will say though um like my first things come to mind we talk analog audio is soundboards and like um anything like mixing board wise which obviously are you know there's just as much character as like a great actor or a great writer great director like these these soundboards have have a built-in soul and and purpose as well and i agree that i think they're they're full of that and they're they're full of some of the you know you think of fleetwood mac records tom petty records foo fighter records nirvana records so whatever you want to want to call it even some early early hip-hop records um maybe even some of the early Nas stuff, like the you go back ball, yeah. and they have the mix board itself had a character too. So it all played a role, but I will say, if you ever want to do a mix recall on an, on, a, on an old mix, an old mixing board, it's going to take you about five days just to mix recall one song and then make one tweak. Whereas yeah. nowadays when you can, and again, I guess I understand it's bittersweet in that that was part of the journey and, and part of the discovery of, of analog audio and finding these tones and sounds. But I will say the in the box world, is also really great for recall, man, because you just press a button. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I um, This audio that you're listening to, I bought a solid state Logic. It's only a, a little uh, SSL 2 Plus, but it's, mm. it, oh my God, I'm so happy with it because it has these analog knobs on it. Oh, and yeah. they just make me happy. And it's got a 4K <laughs> legacy button. So it sounds yeah, more great. like the original giant board. So it was just like, I've got to buy this. I, I wouldn't feel right if I bought an M Audio interface or something, you know. So I, yeah, I really, I, yeah. So I, true, man. I run, you know, it's funny. I don't know how many nerds are going to want to hear about this stuff. Oh no, right? this is exactly the reason I want to speak to people is because it helps. Like we've talked to an actress yesterday about her audition process. We've had kids on it with their, with their parents talking about trying to start going to auditions. So it's it, absolutely, all of this helps, man. Oh, great. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I, and it's funny. I, I can, I can tell you my horror stories of the audition room and tell you my horror stories of the film jobs. And I can also tell you about ADDA conversion in audio and how much, how much I respect and love digital audio. So yeah. you can go whatever route you want, man. You, you uh, just, you got no, it. I really appreciate you just coming on and, and like, I've got a lot of respect for the work you do because it's a difficult decision to make, right? I've got to step aside from something I love doing to obviously something else you obviously love doing because you're working up with your wife on it. And it is a it is a incredibly difficult process, and this is one of the reasons that I st uh, co-founded the festival with a friend of mine, is because I couldn't stand uh, nothing to do. Not nothing to do because I work anyway. Uh, th thankfully, I still work at home. But it was I need to I need to put my creative energy somewhere, and it was incredibly difficult for me to shoot anything at home because there's so much going on. Like at the moment, I've got flooring happening, and I I couldn't step out the hour. Uh, office for four hours today so oh. it's little things so i thought right i'm not going to shoot anything right i've got all this parquet flooring from this uh, convent it's got to get laid we've paid them a lot of money it's got to get done so i thought right over the last few months when everything's going on especially because it's such a major project this house it's um I thought, right we've got to create something for an outlet for people to create content and it's been such a positive experience talking to people like yourself and loads of t super talented people from canada we've just spoke to a filmmaker from um uh, tel aviv australia oh, wow. new zealand uh, colombia trying to speak to the person from colombia because that'll be the energy would be so different you know yes. and uh so it's been a, an absolute privilege and i don't have going off on a massive tangent as i always do uh, no it's cool it's, I, like i said it's it's uh 
I saw you, I can't remember. I, I, I'll be, I'll be completely flat out honest. I can't remember. I think it was um, through, it was definitely a link through the, the Toronto international film fest or the isolation film fest. And then I saw your guys' website because after they had done the, um, done the, the, the submission process and after the, I think it was actually after the broadcast is when I saw you guys on Instagram. And I thought, I just thought to myself, I was like, well, you know what the heck? Like, uh, this looks really cool. And I mean, why not, uh, why not submit it again? Cause I had such a great time in the Toronto one and, you know, getting honorable mention and, you know, just before their top tens and it was great to be part of that. And then, uh, when I saw your guys' Instagram, I th and to be honest with you, I thought even further, there's a, there's the, the Whistler film fest, the Vancouver film festival, Absolutely, I don't, yeah. I don't know if Montreal's doing one or not, but I'm going to consider submitting it just because obviously I'll submit the, I don't know if you'd noticed, but I did a, I did a UK cut for you guys because I don't know if you wanted to talk about that a bit. You know what? I, I did notice, but I didn't think about it again until you've just mentioned it. Okay. I totally dig that. And I'm going to, let me make a note about that. Cause that's going to get, I'm going to make sure no matter what UK edition, you're absolutely going to get an honorable mention for that in some, one, one shape or another, no matter what, whatever, you know, happens with the show on the 20th that's going to get mentioned because to do that is extremely clever and it's not it's a, was it the was it all the content on the screen exactly the content on the screen and then the announcer and the name of the radio station and all that because it just didn't at the time ah I, did you I mean, do I, that after or did you how did you do that please let me know <laughs> yes so i did it after and i did it strictly because i applied and i'm not lying because i applied to your film festival and i thought to myself none of these jokes are going to land or potentially none of these jokes on the, on the paper, especially the jokes with like our premier of uh, Ontario. He, he was wearing a, a um, conquer COVID shirt and he, he literally looked like a world wrestling federation wrestler. Like he actually looked like a stone cold Steve Austin or a Hulk Hogan macho man type. Like he literally did in one of his speeches. And I thought it was so amazing. I was like, this is incredible. Like, first of all, a, I want that shirt. Second of all, I thought, <laughs> okay, like premier, uh, Doug Ford is his name. He uh he just looks so badass, and I was like, okay, that that's gonna make the you know the the quarantine paper that that the that my character's reading, and then there was a viral. You may or may not have heard of this. In our our uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had a uh, a speech. Uh, he was addressing as he usually addresses every day or every few days or sometimes once a week. He <laughs> he had a speech, and in his speech he 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 talked about speaking moistly. Uh, someone's and, done a music video for yeah. our festival for that, yeah. Okay, so great. So um, th there's an actual viral song that a, a fella out of, um, I think it's Alberta, Canada. I've and heard it, yeah. Yeah, so I, I can't even, I can't, I can't place his name right now, so I apologize about that. But anyway, this, this thing went viral, and it was huge, and it was hilarious. So I was like, hey, that's going to be in the newspaper too. But then when I was submitting for you guys, and I just, I do this all the time. I'm, I'm a pre-pro, like, just nerd. I, I, I do things... Like I actually shot the film for about 50, 60 seconds before I even shot the film. Like I, I set up everything, I set up a few angles just to see how I was going to do it. I even put a little edit together, a couple of the jokes just to see if it works. Like I do this all the time. Would you call that your kind of boarding process? Absolutely. Yeah. It's exactly like a board, like a, yeah, like, sh you know, it's kind of like shot, shot listing, but just doing it actually shooting. Um, not necessarily the most, um, the quickest route to do it when you're you know working with a crew and stuff but i'm by myself and i'm in quarantine so who, who cares but i i do this a lot because i dissect a lot and i like to break things down and see if they're gonna land or if they're gonna be quality and um when i watched back because there was a few things i wanted to tweak ever since the like i think it was cut eight that i submitted to the the trunk okay. i got into cut nine ten just a couple little tweaks and in, in quirks here and there audio wise and a couple maybe i think insert shots but i watched it again and i thought yeah, I want to submit to this UK Film Fest. It looks great. Um, and then I thought to myself, but are my jokes going to land, especially the newspaper ones? So I, uh, Trudeau, Trudeau, to a certain degree, yes. But in terms of the shirt and that kind of thing, probably it's, not. So it's a very clever move. That's why, that's why <laughs> I made a note because I, I applaud you for that. I think it's, a, it's not a, a deceitful change. It's a, it's a respectful one as well in terms of, in terms of your work and your audience as well so more props to you for doing that oh thank you man yeah it was it was a simple um i, I want to say simple reshoot because i just had to essentially reshoot the laptop opening um i had to redesign the new you know the quote-unquote digital newspaper newsprint i was reading i just had to redesign that uh relight 
but it's funny because you know how, how light is and how times change. I shot the film, you know, somewhere in the beginning of April when we were still kind of brownish grayish outside. And then now when I'm doing the pickup four weeks later, I have green grass outside. So even through the glass refraction, the, the refraction and the reflection, I had a bit of green light tinge. So I had, there was, there was some, oh, uh, wow. some color tweaks that I had to do and to try to figure it out to, to shoot the same spot. Cause the same spot, the spot where I shot is right in my, uh, in my kitchen and we look out on a, on our front yard there and, but yeah, you get a lot of color reflection from, from the grass and the blues and the greens and stuff. So even just the little things like that, I, I thought to myself, this is going to be great. I'll just do this. And then I started shooting and I started realizing I was like, Oh shoot. So I think I did a pretty good job blending it in. And... Uh, the uh, radio channel. Was that oh. you, you doing a Scottish impression? <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's pretty good. I, I'll say that it, it it's a, it's a, the only this is not a criticism. This no, is please, critique. Hey, throw it at me, man. I'm, the, I'm now I'm part Scottish, so I'm gonna I'm justified saying this. I'm like a uh, part Welsh, part Scottish, part, mm. basically I'm from all corners of the UK. My and like I I I reflect badly. I burn in the sun, so I know I'm from kind of northern UK, and uh, my ancestry is uh, going to be Nordic. So I can say this justifiably now. <laughs> The only thing you want that person that's Scottish to sound more fucking miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. I swear to God, and I'm not kidding here. I had done a couple of uh, voiceover cuts, and I even said to to my wife, um, I, I, because I, I do a, I feel I do a better Scott than I do a Brit. So I thought, okay, I'm going with Scott just because it, it it feels. It, it, it feels better. The delivery feels better. But I swear to you, I had a couple where he it did sound quite miserable. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't like it because I thought, no, I don't want to. I don't want to submit to a film fest. I wanted to submit to a film fest. So. Yeah, it, and it, it uh, the the best reason you did that, though, best compliment I can give you for that is because it it's consistent with the rest of the energy of the film. If you had had a miserable gut thing and then it had gone to you, and your character's kind of not bouncy, but has the right kind of positive energy that I think that's one of the reasons I really liked your film is that it just, it, it flowed really well and the energy was right and fun. And obviously the music matched that as well. So yeah, you, you absolutely made the right choice, but if you want to do a real Scottish, you're going to be a miserable bastard. Well, Alex too, I said to myself, cause you, you're, I mean, and like you said, you have the right, I have, I have, I will say as being as, as Canadian as I am, I have, I have uh, British, I have uh, Scottish and English uh, blood in there in the, you know, last name Blackwood. Like it's, it's, it's back there. It's, it's generations back there. Great, great, yeah. great, great grandmothers, I'm sure. But um, not to say that I have the, the right to, to be a, be a good Scotsman, but um, for, uh, when I did it, I thought, okay, I, I thought it had to kind of carry this. Like, I don't, I don't care who you are, how miserable you really are. If you find out that this thing is defeated, this, you know, COVID-19, we've got the vaccine and we're, you know, we've, we're good now. I feel like no matter how miserable you'd be, you'd be pretty excited. So yeah. maybe, even, maybe even the slightest bit of excitement, I think, was what I was trying to go for. No, I think, uh, yeah, absolutely. With your, with your narrative, it, made, it makes complete sense. Good. And even that most hardened Scottish uh, <laughs> shepherd or something would be happy with that. Because if it is... Oh, sorry, sorry go, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to mention that it, the big thing too was that like the... I had done this little tiny short bit. It was seriously, uh, I would think it was like a 45 second or a one minute film. Uh, a photographer from the area had emailed me and said, I'm looking for an actor or voiceover. And, you know, I got your name from such and such. And I said, oh, sure. I said, send me the, the bit. And, and it happened to be like a 30s style. Like, okay, so today, um, yeah, Jim, okay, let's all do that. Yeah, the weather report is. And uh, I don't know what happened, but I had that feeling again for the, the film that I did for, the, for, for It's Over. So I thought, I'm just going to bring it back. I've, I just spent, you know, two days doing this little bit, this little job for, you know, a, a photographer from Toronto. I thought, I'm going to stay right in this laneway and just go, I'm going to be in, you know, in the original, if you watch the, the Canadian cut or the, you know, whatever the North American cut um, you'll hear that it's, yeah, it's, it's like a 1930s radio announcer, but. Oh, like yeah. Edward G. Robinson or something. Like yeah. Old school yeah. Actor. Do you know what? Thinking back to what you said, you're absolutely right to cast the Scotsman in that radio station because the energy you'd have to be, it'd have to be, if there was a cure and it was being given out worldwide now, it'd be such a monumental occasion. I think so. And a Scottishman, a Scotsman 
would be so fucking. I think everyone would be. And like it was when the U, when the um when the Olympics was in the UK, I think it was eight years ago, something like that. I should know that. Uh, and it was the the energy across the UK was so different, and it was the positivity was fantastic and all of that. And even people at my distant family up up further past the uh, Hadrian's Wall, they were they were just as happy as I was, and it united the country to a certain degree. And obviously with Brexit and all of that, everything's just fucked. Right. Uh, so, yeah, right, uh, right. so yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think if you look in, if you think about your film and you think about Scotsman doing that on radio saying, uh, there's a cure. Or what, I can't remember the line of dialogue. <laughs> it, it, it was, it makes complete sense. It would be a Scotch, Scots person. If it had been like classic English uh, London type, then it, not, not Cockney, but it wouldn't work, wouldn't work as well. Yeah, it would sound almost too official, but it sounds like it's someone on the ground being so happy. So yeah, uh, a very, a very smart decision. Decision there. It's a, it's a, a very clever uh, decision to make it, obviously uh, UK oriented. But yeah, a very good one overall. Oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. A friend of mine said to me, <laughs> um, "I'm looking forward to when you do the, uh, what do you say, the uh, the South Korean cut." And he's like, "Can you start speaking Korean?" <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not gonna happen, but <laughs> no, I like the additions I do. That's very, very, really, you know, that's why I'm going to make a special uh, props to you on the 20th. Oh, it's I because, uh, and obviously, there's so many great films, there really is. And I'll show you a couple of them as well. Uh, is uh, to be able to do that, to make it UK uh, ready, is, is great. And did you have that in mind initially? I'm going to put this into festivals worldwide. Or did you think, oh, I could change this and it would still make complete sense? So here's a great question. So the, con- the original concept was uh, from my friend James Waller and, you know, he's, he's in, the, in the credits. And he, so th- our short story about him, just a short backstory so we can talk about how this happened. He's, uh, he's a dear, near and dear friend of mine. I've known him since I was four years old. We grew up together in a uh, small town, Burlington, Ontario, which is, you know, just about an hour, 45 minutes outside of Toronto, uh, Ontario, Canada. Um, this, his con... We have a long story short, we have a little chat group going with all my sort of a handful of the of the dearest and near nearest and dearest sort of high school and public school buddies. And we have a little WhatsApp chat because a lot of them don't necessarily live in Canada anymore. And James is one of them. He actually lives in Hong Kong. So we get to chat almost every day because we do this WhatsApp, although he's almost 12 hours difference. But uh, I, I, I saw the film. The way it happened was I saw the film fest poke up. And I said, oh, this, yeah, I got I to gotta enter this thing. But I was literally, I don't know what happened. I was kind of dry for ideas. And I just had mentioned to my friend James, I said, and a couple of the guys, I said, does anyone have an idea for a short film? Because I'm, I'm, I really want to do one. It's got to be, you know, three minutes or under. And, uh, but I need a good, you know, a good talk, like a good idea. And I just, I, I'm feeling dry lately. And uh, he just chimes in and goes, you know, it'd be funny. A short film about everything, po- like the day you find out the pandemic is over and the day quarantine's done. He's like, you know, I, you know, he's like, go, go wherever direction you want to go. But like, wouldn't it be funny if maybe you even say, maybe you, you, you started, um, you know, deciding on some things that you were going to, you know, you're going to commit to some, you know, you know, commit to the book club or commit to the, the histo- historic knitting museum, these things y- you realize, oh yeah, I'll commit to that and be a nice person. Cause I'll never, ever have to actually do that. Cause who knows how this is going to last and how long it's going to last. And, uh, he, uh, yeah. So he, he threw the idea at me and then that's that's when i was like okay and then the spark just went on fire and then all the joke ideas came and how i was going to shoot it the newspaper and then um as far as the country concept sort of country submissions con- concept happened was after i got um you know after i fa- you know after the the success of the toronto festival um and then i had saw your guys uh, instagram i said to 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 james i said you know i think i should submit this thing to a couple different film fests and then that's when we started chatting and I said, but listen, my, he's like, yeah, you should, it, you know, it did, it did well enough in the Toronto one. And, but that's when I had mentioned, I don't think these Canadian jokes will land though in certain, like they'll land in the United States for the most part. Um, yeah. And I mean, you could quick edit too, but honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't a plan from the beginning knowing I could tweak the, cause I mean, you know, it, a films are films, they're shot in places and you know, whether jokes land or not. And I think that's the trick with comedy. Like, again, I have no idea. Like comedy is such a hard um, uh, like market and media to nail because it, it's kind of just that when Absolutely. you're trying to be funny. Yeah. You know, when you're trying to be funny, it's usually not funny at all. And you know, that's why comedy is such a tough thing. So the, um, the joke that landed best for me was Netflix, the Netflix. Oh, okay. 
good. Because uh, the, yeah, because because that obviously Netflix works worldwide. Yes. So it is. No, we've completed Netflix. Whatever, whatever the line was, I thought, yeah, that's great. Love that. <laughs> and yeah. uh, just some so some very smart choices, man. And uh, Thank you. yeah, compliments for doing that. And possibly if you did like a Japanese one or something like that, and there's a festival, you could put the Japanese subtitles on. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you could, I get, you could have, uh, hey, you could replace the newspaper with, uh, you know, like a Japanese newspaper or something. But again, it's just, you know, I think for me, the attention to detail I've noticed growing up and in film and TV and even in music is always, it's always there. And yeah. I think I'm, I'm also like, I'm just such a, an over critic when it comes to my own stuff that like, it just seemed right. And it, it just seemed for me, it was kind of like, why the heck not? Because in most cases, no, you don't re-edit the film to suit the country. But this is a three-minute short. This is a, a fun film fest. And I thought to myself, well, well, this is actually a chance to even try to, like, challenge myself. That's another thing, too. I'm always up for a good challenge. And I thought, oh, this will be interesting. So I'll have to reshoot, recreate, redo this, redo that, and then tweak, and then tweak the edit, re redo the coloring, and all this stuff. But I thought to myself, that's kind of fun in a weird, odd filmmaker way. But I'm sure you can... You yeah, know, I, I, it's totally my jam, man. And <laughs> uh, if uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, and it's definitely going to get an honourable mention in one way or another. Appreciate it, thank you. Because it's uh, it's it's a unique it's a unique choice you made, and I think a very clever one. And yeah, and now you told me it. Obviously, I hadn't. I don't think I'd seen the other versions. I think I'd just seen yours because obviously the admin and keeping organised all the films because it's been completely mental. Because we thought we were going to get 15 to 20 submissions because it was just initially an idea between a friend and I. We got over 105 films. And mm. the fact we've, we've got no big backing or anything like that. Possibly next year, based on our judges, we could do. And we're going to, touch, we're going to try and find the right kind of, the right kind of uh, partners as well because we don't want this to turn into some uh, over-showy, glamorous thing. And I'll, I'll be really critical and uh, not too insulting and I'm going to keep this in the podcast, is that I love what the ISFF did, but the, the show on the day was completely overproduced for me. But that was just my taste in terms of the comedy and certain things. Maybe it just didn't hit with me too well. And I was getting some comments from people that submitted films to them about how they executed the final day. You know, mm. fan, it was a fantastic achievement. The amount of work that went into that, I give them a, props but it's, it's kind of not going to be the way we're going to do ours. Uh, we've got three people that are going to present, and then we've got obviously our amazing uh, judges that we're going to present towards the end of the end of the day. And then we're going to try and include people in calls at the end of the, uh, the actual award show, which would be really difficult, but we're going to try it. And uh, yeah, so we're not going to be, it's not going to be like, uh, uh, I'm not gonna be in a cocktail dress. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, I there's that's just a that's a personal opinion. I'm not trying to put that on anyone, but uh, no, that's I mean how I, I think, felt about it. I think now, guys, you know, you guys like Stephen Mann. Like he's he's a casting director. He's been in the business for for years. His mum, his mum has been in the business for decades. That's a that's a family. It's a pretty legendary family. And the the fact that they, I think they're I, I think in the in the in the in the beginnings of this, it seemed like they had this little idea. And then um, it's blown up. It, yeah, so I've got so much respect for him. And those photographs of him in the bath. Oh yeah, he's. I, yeah. This is. I've got to. I've got to. If you see this video, <laughs> zero disrespect to you and your festival, but it was obviously I was watching it like four o'clock in the morning. I was watching it as well. So because I, I like, I've spoken to a couple of filmmakers that had there did quite well in it, yeah. and uh, so maybe it was just that complete exhaustion as well. But it's it's like having microphones that are the spoons i understand it it's a whole it's a whole isolation joke thing but yeah I, i've got the utmost respect because the production and what he achieved in such a short period of time was is monumental so I, I think that that's that's kind of the the key message there i think is the kind of best way to explain it because they're they went from this sort of i, I think anywhere from what i see again i'm not going to put words in anyone's mouth whatsoever so yeah. it just seems like from what i got from the looking like outside peering in um, that they had this little idea and all of a sudden it kind of uh, exploded in a very good way, you know, bringing Cineplex on. And, Absolutely, and, that's great. 
and and then and then I think the show itself. I think it's just one of those things. It's called growing pains, right? So the show itself, I I, I believe, and again, being you know completely uh, humbled and, and and honored to have been you know yeah. have my film shown and um and along along the the list of incredible filmmakers. And I think there was just a couple of maybe some stumbling points, but I mean, I think they already know. I'm sure they know, and I'm sure they you know it's. The, the film types that are that are in the, in the development of that kind of stuff, I'm sure, have already, okay, so what are we doing next year and how are we going to tweak this and tighten this up and, you know, and this, that, and the other thing, so. Yeah, so uh, more power, is it Stephen Mann, more power to you, sir, yeah. um, because to to motivate, like the, the best thing that I've seen is young actors that we're talking 10, 11 years old that are just starting off in the business and as you can attest to, uh, Ian, that the pains of uh, rejection is is massive, so they've given you know uh, especially for uh, canadian actors they've given them huge amount of focus there so uh yeah. it's just it was just a, it's just a little thing it's probably the absolute exhaustion you know, of watching that in in the uk it's going i'm trying to watch everyone's film <laughs> it was so tired. well it was also so, very uh, long it was long it was i think it was yeah almost i think hours. hours i think hours is going to be uh two hours we want to make it a tight mm-hmm. a tight project and i think two hours we're not going to show every film in entirety because even, and obviously I don't think uh, the ISFF did that because it would be showing 800 films would have been crazy. Yeah. And uh, it's not how festivals work anyway. So right. we're going to, I think this is a little inside and not inside of baseball, but we're going to, that's an American reference. I shouldn't have used that because okay. it's, it, I, I've seen a few baseball games and they were long. They were like five <laughs> hours or something. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to do a top 20 mm. and we're going to start off with a compilation of, we're we'll trying to do a sequence where we show a shot, at least one shot of every single film. So everyone will be showcased in mm. a very small way, but it's, we want to really kind of have energy up and then it's going to be the three of us presenting. So it's myself, Nadia, who's based in North Carolina. She's been a friend of mine for over 10 years. And, uh, uh Chris is the other co-founder of the festival. So we're going to present it just the three of us and it, we're going to try and make it a lot of fun and it caught in between those top 20. There'll be honorable mentions, which you're definitely going to be one uh, yeah. just because of that clever choice. Now other people might have done that, but we'll, I'm going to highlight that because it's a, uh, it's a really nice move. And uh, I say as a compliment to the UK, which is great. Uh, and I, I honestly, I love the UK. It's not, and I'm not, I'm not trying to S any D's here. I'm just, <laughs> I am a fan. I've, I've been, I've toured in bands, been over there. Um, again, oh, I, have cool. the, I have, I have the That's blood cool. in my body. I have the blood of the UK in my body. You know, yeah, I, I think yeah. it's a great country and, um, yeah. I mean, so you know, yeah, we're going to do top 20 and then cut in between every, so we're going to show 20 full films mm. and obviously our sequence with every, every film. And then every second film we're going to show, we're going to award a film. And then we're going to have um, at least, what can I say? Best editing. We're going to have performance, like an acting award. I'm speaking to a couple of relatively big actors to see if they're interested in awarding it. Oh. Um, if not, we'll make that choice ourselves. And then best animation, there's a comedy award that a UK based podcast called Nerd OD, they're going to, they're a really small podcast, but they go to a lot of these conventions and they talk to actors and they, they've built a, a relatively small community here so we're going to ask them to present the comedy award nice. uh and yeah it's uh it's a lot of fun man cinematography obviously with vance burberry which is i was so so stoked about that yeah and then great. today the director's duo i think they're based out of germany or france I, or maybe maybe more nordic than that so i need to double check that before i make a mistake about saying that because uh, you'd never want to get these countries mixed up <laughs> So, um, no, exactly make, yeah make shut up all the time and they're gonna do as far as i'm aware they're gonna do a, a piece to camera awarding the film for best film so they're gonna choose best film because there's gonna be a few uh not arguments uh disagreements about choices and that kind of thing mm. uh there's some very clear groups of films that's what i will say that are really well produced put together that we're very happy about and then there's some like and like the animation award for a start there's two or three that are i can't believe they're first time animators one of them is from the uk and i'll show you his film it's called uh, what would what a fly would do in anima- in uh, isolation and uh and there's two or three others and i just can't believe uh they're first time uh filmmakers 
And so, yeah, it's something that something that I'm extremely proud of, like the fact that you've done that. And I take a lot of pride. I take it personally that you've, uh, you've made that choice because of our festival. So that's why I'm, I'm super thankful for that. And awesome. we've had just like the film from Tel Aviv is hilarious. I'll probably show you that one as well. So it's, uh, it's great, man. And before I show you any of that, I want to kind of talk about the technical aspects of your film. So sure. what, what did you shoot on? So, uh, you know, another one of the joys of being a wedding photographer and, you know, being in that industry, especially my wife being in the industry for 10 years plus, we've got the best gear. So we've got, you know, we got our hands. We have at any given time, we're shooting two cameras each on the day. So we have four cameras and they're, they're all Canon 5D Mark IVs. So we're shooting Canon 5D Mark IV DSLRs. And then our glass is amazing. We've got, you know, we've got some, obviously you've got our tank lenses, our 2.8, 24 to 70 Canons. Uh, we've got two of those. Those are, those are our workhorse. We call them the tank lenses because you can drop them. You can, you can, you know, fumble them, mismanage them, and they still work. Yeah. And they get everything other you know, 2.8. So they, you know, they're great and, and uh, moderately, um, you know, bright to. Cause you, you, know, you almost, dark. before you even put the camera with that particular lens is, you know, you, you know, your look already. Yes. There's and you so need much that, you need that, as you know, Alex, in the wedding industry, you need, you need, you can't show up. You just can't show up with a uh, run of the mill, even like a rebel and just some sort of like, you know, crop censored weird. No, lens. even for that. image. Even yeah. if you create the best image in wedding history, you can't turn up. It's, re it's, it's kind of superficial in some ways. You can't turn up with a pocket cam. Obviously, you wouldn't anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like this subconscious thing about Canon and Sony, especially Sony now, because they're yeah. doing very well. And we can always have a discussion about Sony versus Canon. Uh, and yeah. Canon, Canon colors for me, they obviously rock. Yes. We, out of the camera... Like Nadia, who's the, our content curator, mm. and she's co-producing the podcast with me now. Uh, she just bought a Canon camera, and she was just doing pieces to camera. She's she's worked out a couple of hacks so she can use it as a full webcam now for Zoom. Nice. And uh, yeah, uh, I totally agree with being able to shoot that. And my little question about I'll, I'll talk to obviously about the sound, which is obviously fifty percent of the film for me. Mm -hmm. Is uh, um, how did you? Is it a um, crop on full frame on 4K? So how did you did you shoot in HD? What was the score with that? Yeah, it looks. It look, your film looks lovely. Thank you, thank you. It's um, it's not 4K. It can now the 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 5D Mark IV can shoot 4K, but it's just such a. Is it like 1.5 crop or something like that? Um, I don't even. To be honest, I I don't know that I know the answer to that because. When it comes to like the, I know, I know crop sensor lenses with the Rebels. I, I do want to go back one second. I, I didn't mean to say the yeah, Rebel sure. is the crap camera to shoot weddings. You can pull it off and that should not change anybody's mind on buying a Rebel and you should go out and buy a Rebel, especially if you're a, if you're a beginning filmmaker, because they're good cameras to start with. What yeah. I'm saying is when you're in the industry for over 10 years, you still shouldn't be showing up for after 10 years with a, you know, with a Rebel, you should be showing up with, with something in the, in, uh, in absolutely. The yeah. You step up your game. Yeah. Yeah. You, but that, that, that now that doesn't, at all level the fact that these rebel cam they're incredible cameras I, I have a rebel for the field stuff like if i'm you know sometimes you know i, I do a lot of hunting in canada and sometimes i'm oh, awesome yeah so I, i'll bring the rebel with me and put you know i'll put this you know three thousand dollar lens on it <laughs> and it does do great it does do it justice so that, that i just wanted to, to no i respect that and, and but, people will understand what you said yeah yeah so um but uh and then what we were saying um shoot uh, so you were shooting on a 5D with the tank lenses. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not on, I'm not like a, a, a good textbook for the crop. Like I know what crop sensors and crop lens. And, and, and you know, the, you understand your image though. Yeah. But I, when I'm reading the back of the camera, I just shift it out and make sure it's, you know, whatever frames and then whatever HD just cause, and I do the compression, the, the Mark four has got a really good, I, in my opinion, has got a great compress compression rate built into it, so the files are actually a lot smaller to deal with, and it's but it oh, still looks yeah. still we'll looks have, we'll really have, nice. We'll have a chat about that. Yeah, because for me, like again, I, we talked about shoot to, shoot for the edit, and now again, I'm not shooting on a Black Magic, and I'm not even shoot I'm not shooting on a Sony A7 III or whatever they are. Like, I'm I'd imagine that the files are probably pretty big, but also the quality you get from those cameras is like especially sony low light we can talk about that all day long i know all the videographers that that you know most of them in, G, in the gta and, and that i know of are all on sony's 
And especially when it comes to that first dance and you've got like 25% room light and you're, you're thinking, okay, now I got to put this thing up to, you know, 6,400 ISO or um, maybe, maybe 10,000. I don't know with a Canon, you, you're going to get so much digital artifact, but with the Sony's you don't, <laughs> I know that the Sony's are incredible for that, but um, yeah, just uh, if the, for the, uh, for the film itself though, it was, we just used the one camera and then we flipped from two lenses and some of our favorite lenses and they're, um, they're by uh, a company called Sigma and oh yeah yeah and it's the the two lenses the the art series and it's the uh, the, the the prime lenses so and i use the 35 mil and the 50 mil the 50 mils for more of the close-up stuff and like the close-up the laptop stuff and uh the stuff just when you see the intercut from like closer to my face and pull back to the laptop that's just between the 35 mil lens and the 50 mil lens but the cool thing is you can go to like 2.0 or 1.8 and i find that it gives that milky silky. yeah warm film look with the you know the, you know you get the blurry a little bit yeah. blurry, portrait I, I, I think the choice for having those lenses especially for the screen stuff so the actual scrolling of the newspapers and everything that's that's on screen isn't it yeah yeah that was just right on my laptop man like, so the fact that you use those lenses helped you massively and obviously you know that but for people that aren't necessarily uh, uh clued up on those particular lenses the sharpness and what they do in terms of the focus allowed you to shoot those screens with a hundred percent confidence, right? Yes. And you knew what you were going to get because like, yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, sharpness or anything like that. So that worked, that worked very, very well. And we've had a lot of people that have included iPhones in their films. And as you can attest to the, the st obviously there's other brands of mobile phone, uh, but, when you look at the sharpness of the screen and you, the fact you can shoot it so well, it helps massively. The only thing I don't like about when you see a, an iPhone in a feature film, they're actually making a real call is the black screen next to someone's face. Right. Like when you watch a film in the nineties or the two thousands, went to mobile proper, you know, a mobile phone, then you can, t the phone's on and my brain says, Oh, they're actually making a call. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see an iPhone in a film, and it's got light on it or apps, you know, they're not actually making a call. Right. So it's a weird disconnect, a uh, real weird disconnect. And uh, yeah, those lenses are great, man. Just to take it back to your lenses. It's, they're such beautiful lenses, like the two or three of the films that we've received in the festival, they shot on obviously the, the very popular 18 to 35 F1.8. And I've used the 35 mil Sigma on a wedding. The one, the exact one you've got. And so happy so happy using it yeah so, my so. my go-to is the 50 for portrait and i do a lot of candid because of my my background's film my wife's always she's portrait photography she's she's been there done that for That's me great, yeah. i do a lot of the candid work at uh, once the day continues after i've done working with the groom and doing the groom prep and you know the grooms have high-fived and they've high-fived and they've fixed their ties and that when we when we, when when we meet back up and they do ceremony and stuff like that, I've kind of turned into the candid photographer. So my, the 50 lens is, is my bread and butter, man. I love that thing, especially 1.8, even 1.6 sometimes, even 1.4 if I want to go for that real, you know, nice. So which, uh, which fifth, which is that the Canon lens you've got? Still the Sigma ART 50. Oh, I actually, awesome. prefer, yeah, I prefer the, the Sigma ART 50 um, prime over the Canon prime. I've tried a Canon prime before and I just found, it wasn't as sharp as, and I know I'm sure there's, you know, I'm sure there's micro adjustments you can make and the tweaks you can do in the calibration. But for me, because I'm not that much of a, and my wife is awesome because she knows all this like extreme camera nerd stuff. You want to talk music nerd stuff. I can go till the cows come <laughs> home. When it comes to camera stuff. I'm pretty limited as the nerd stuff. So I just like to buy a lens, put it on and it works. I don't want to have to send it in and calibrate a million and one things. I just want to know that it, that it, that it works. And in the wedding industry, it's like, you can't tell them to kiss again. So it's the same, you know, it's kind of the same theory. It's like, I want to get that kiss and move on. And I never in my life would ever ask someone to kiss again. So I just want the camera lens to go on. And, uh, you know, and there's, there's some tweaks that I do with it, but at the, at the end of the day, I want, I want it to work. It's yeah. Yeah. It's, they're just tools in the end. Like, uh, I like gear videos as much as the next person, but, and there's a lot of YouTubers. That I, I love the content. And I love their execution of their videos, but I don't want, obviously this is a viewing habit more than, a, uh, I shouldn't really be a, too much of a criticism. I love Marcus Brownlee. I love I Justine. I love these people that, have gone out, they've made a career, but they, I wish they'd shoot more of their own stuff as well, if you know what I mean. 
mm-hmm. because they're very talented what they do. And obviously that's their, that's their focus is gear reviews. Mm. And Marcus Brownlee's audio is exceptional. Obviously he's got the high, you know, highest end microphones and all of that treatment, but it's, uh, obviously there's, it's difficult to find, you know, if you want to buy a new lens or something, you kind of almost have this built in knowledge and then who do I trust? That's something that's difficult online. Who do I trust? Who's endorsed? Who's not endorsed? Right. And so it's, yeah, it's it's tricky, man. Like I like to pull apart. How did someone shoot that film? What do they work on? Like, thank God for Vi- for the likes of Vimeo, where people are more inclined to put what gear they used in the video, uh, in right. the description. And I've I've bought gear based on that, you know. So this is only a, this is an old lens, but like the Sony, the sorry, not Sony. Jesus, what am I saying? The Canon forty mil pancake full frame. Yeah. Why did why didn't why didn't Canon make more pancake lenses that are full frame? Because this is so sharp. We've taken some of my favorite photos with it. And the oh. lens the lens you're going through to me on is uh, or I'm the other way around mm. is uh, a Soviet lens from eighty three, a year after I was born. I'll and get it's it. uh, it's a Mia. It's a what the hell is it? Uh, it's a Mia twenty mil uh, three point five. And I've got it on a, a focal reducer. So it's actually more, more like a two, something like that. And I know this is kicking out for me on that 27 mil. And Roger Deacon shoots on a 27 mil. Right, if it gets anywhere near the framing I like of some of his stuff, because he's a genius cinematographer, then mm. great. And I'm looking to pull my image apart a bit more. And I want a more of a vintage look. And when I do my photography stuff, I've got a friend of mine who's an exceptional wedding photographer based in Chester, which is where I am. And he uses all Sigma now, all Sigma. He's, he's got 5D Mark III still, and he shoots on an A7 III. So he's not like brand loyal, but the Sigma lenses, he's like, yeah, don't use anything else now because the results he's getting are fantastic. And I've used his lenses. I've used the 35 and looked a bit. And I'll just show you this is a bit of a show and tell. So this is only like, I wish I had more money to invest on better glass. That's, you know, everything else is the house and all of that, you know. You know mm-hmm. So I shoot on uh, relatively low budget cameras, but I bought my, uh, this is an anamorphic adapter. This is by SLR Magic. So when I do kind of more cinematic stuff and I shot a wedding in anamorphic and it was incredible it was a huge risk huge oh, risk bet, yeah. like imagine you've been given a new camera a new lens not a lens <laughs> but a new tech that is unreliable in a lot of frames but when you get it right it looks like magic <laughs> but i that did was- it on because it was a massive risk and i i actually cut my price down quite a bit and i said to them this is how i want to shoot it it was video uh, would you be happy doing that? And they were like, yeah, great. I, I did some test examples, you know, the kind of pre-wedding shoot, walking yeah. around the park, whatever, with their kids. Yeah. And I was so happy because it, it felt like I was shooting a movie because it gave me a 239 by one aspect ratio, which is super wide. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's they're all tools in the end. I love it to bits. Like uh, my fa- I'll show you my favorite piece of kit. This is an old, uh, um, I can't remember what is this. Is it here? I hope it is. This is a Helios uh, 58 mil. Oh, wow. But it comes in the silver that came from when I bought it. I like that. I like that a lot. And it's got like a, uh, they coat this company called, they called Iron Glass Adapters based in, I think it's the Ukraine. They've become pretty big now. And uh, Marcus Brownlee uses uh, lenses a lot of the time. So it's, uh, they coat it in a certain color on the inside to give it a certain look. Ooh. So when you're fully wide open and a couple of stops down, you can see this kind of purple tinge or warm amber tinge. And it's more of a kind of creative thing for doing shorts, that kind of thing. You'd, I would never use it on a wedding. Uh, but it's, I used it on the anamorphic one though. So I adapted that tiny little lens for anamorphic. A huge risk, but the results, I'll send you a link to it, is uh, it was great and... Yeah, it's just, it all is just tools in the end, isn't it? Well, yeah, and again, my hat's off to you, mate. For anyone who does video in the wedding world, I always, always just, I look over, I'll look over at them during speeches, during ceremony, especially during vows, and you just see there's just a little extra sweat coming off the forehead during those parts because you just know that they're just, you know, they've got their shot, but you know as well as I, 
the film can look good, but if it sounds bad, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, hundred <laughs> percent. And the biggest thing is about having the unknown of switching to black magic for me is uh, before the current firmware update, if the camera went off, you lost the recording of what you had. So you don't have the recording. Now, oh. when you, sh cause I shoot everything raw. I know that's insane for video. It's insane. Thankfully, Blackmagic brought out B-Raw or Brawl, their own RAW, and it's compressed, but it looks amazing. It still has all the controls as, as raw, like RAW photos. That's good. Which I, I thank them for. Um, when I was shooting the last uh, wedding that I did, oh, I can't remember when that was. I think it was December, something like that. I, I always do the, I call it the last supper shot, you know, when you have a long table mm -hmm. and... Uh, yeah. And then it's just perfectly framed. You know, I'm, I'm lower. I'm the same height as the person standing off, whatever. So it's always the same frame because I love it so much. And then now I always have someone else doing the cutaways of the audience because I want those reactions. Right. So especially when you're working on a small crew and the biggest fear is the camera going off. So I always split the clip. Yeah. That's and good. It's, it's so much fear involved because I have separate audio on the tables. You know the score. That's I have the separate audio on the tables. I I don't lapel anyone during the speeches because of of how complicated, you know, you can't have five yeah. lapels on if you're doing big speeches. Yeah, and uh, I end up having, I give the responsibility to the best man and I put fucking pressure on him. I say, right, I've got this, uh, I've got the Zoom audio recorder. Well, you've got to do, no no stress, I'll call him Stephen, the best man in this in this scenario. Yeah. Now, Stephen, can you, can you make sure you point this? And then you could see the sweat on him looking at the uh, recorder. <laughs> so it's happened a, a few times, but I, I, and it always works. And yeah. I, all, this one particular detail I mentioned during the wedding meeting, saying that all your requirements, this is my only, like I'm, you know, the score when you're trying to sell yourself as a, as a photographer or mm. a videographer, you want to come across the best way, but I just got a couple of things that need to, that need to be agreed on. So that's mm. in a contract, that audio recorder responsibility on the best man is in my contract oh really that's amazing so it's like it's <laughs> a very because of the stress you know you know oh, yeah i mean my my for me the big um oh my god moments are and again because i'm an audio guy and have been for years um the big moments for me are watching speeches and then when a mic they'll be like and uh john i uh, 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 and then you look over at the the dj who didn't even know he was you know in charge sometimes of the mc of audio usually that's house job or whatever whosever job it is yeah. and then you look over at the uh at maybe one of the newbie or the newer video videographers and and you just look at them and you know that they didn't put a field recorder at the booth and you know that they've only been taking a dry signal from the the the, uh, the board and you know that the board signal is screwed and oh, that yeah. oh, and that's like you can just hope to god that it, it, hopefully it's 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 a you know auxiliary that doesn't have anything to do with the output of the home of the home <laughs> <laughs> but you and I both know it usually is and it's like yeah. i always say to Aaron I'll, my wife I'll say um that videographer better get creative with that speech and that editor. Yeah. How they're going to fix that mic. The worst, the worst thing I've ever seen, I'll tell you an audio fit reference that completely agrees with that, is the worst visual thing is uh, when I first doing the wedding, was it Jesus Christ, almost 20 years ago, uh, was uh, someone else's wedding that he had all these mini DVs of the wedding. Of, oh, I've not got the time. Would you be interested? Yeah, you're going to pay me. I'll, I'll edit it all together. If it's a load of shit, fine, I'll, but pay me. So I think it was like 400 pounds or something, my first wedding. And it was, it was just an edit. And I said, I'm charging you this much because you've waited 10 weeks. You've not told the bride anything. I, I assume responsibility. And I took pride in it. And during the speeches, there's a fucking balloon in front of someone's face that's giving no. a speech. I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> so I ended up creating cutaways or reframing the last supper shot as i call it and then i i think i ended up creating or using cutaways from outside and creating this really nice montage oh, i was nice. like that's the biggest fucking plaster i've ever put on anything I think. <laughs> that's brilliant though man and cutaways <laughs> are your godsend you know what I mean? yes, if, if you're absolutely. on your own oh yeah and um uh, audio wise something i can uh totally attest to is uh doubling up or trebling up on your audio 
I went to shoot at the House of Commons, uh, which is obviously the government building in the UK. Yeah, we have a House of Commons in Canada too. Yeah, we're exactly. Under- yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Allegiance to your majesty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I went to shoot there and I'm some of the best looking cutaways I've ever shot because I'm on, when you look at the House of Commons and Big Ben and all of that, mm. you'll see on the, that side of the river, on North Bank, I think it is, there is like a canopy tent area, which is like the a terrace area of the House of Lords. That's where I filmed. So mm. I had to get vetted by the government. I had to had a check and all, you can imagine what it took. Oh, yeah, back on Armed track. guards. I've <laughs> never seen bomb barriers like it because <laughs> I haven't been around that building for years oh, wow. and it was insane. So this was, I think there was, was February this year I shot it. So I'm super, super proud that I went to do it. And no one else wanted to do it at work. Yeah, I'll fucking do it because I know the cutaways I'm going to get. That's how I thought. If I get <laughs> if I get two good looking cutaways, like it's something from a Michael Caine uh, Ipcris file film, <laughs> yeah, then I'll take that. I'll, that's my payment. That's how I saw it. Nice. So when I went to shoot it, this this terrace and the, there's two lords there, the security, but they're all dressed as waiters. So the security are actually dressed as waiters at tables. It's very clever how they did it, and. It's not, it can't be posted anywhere. So it is used on showreel when I go to do work, but it can't actually be legally shown on because you can't show favoritism. If you shoot there, you can't show favoritism to production companies. Gotcha. It can only be used on like two websites, a government one and another site for, for this, this uh, um, disease control thing I was shooting for. And uh, when I went there, it was great, right? Doubling up, doubling up. I'm on my own. I've got a monopod with feet. I've got a black magic camera with a, I think it's a 24105 F4 Sigma. That was the one I was using. I think it was that one. Yeah. Nice. I thought I've got my range. I've yeah. got a uh, EOS, EOS R. It shoots in HD. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about the 4K. I'll use that as the wide, but my safety is shoot on your own. Have a fucking wide shot of the speaker and all the people in the terraces outside. I thought, right, I'm going to shoot it in RAW. That's another tricky thing. I'm going to shoot the whole thing in RAW, leave that camera doing its thing. And then audio, right. I contacted the the person there and they said, oh, we've got a soundboard you can plug into. I'm like, yeah, I'm not fucking using that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and, the first uh, no. That's a hard huge no. rack, a huge <laughs> rack, almost in this kitchen area. I'm like, it was like really odd because obviously the building's so old. Oh, yeah, but, It was in this little room and... Uh, and I thought, okay, I'll put a, I had a Zoom H6 that I borrowed. So, you know, the bigger one with the, with the four like, inputs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a beast. It's got great preamps. <laughs> that's the thing about preamps, the, yeah. And that's the thing people don't understand even what a preamp is, right? When you get into that world, that's a whole other thing too. Because you, oh, you can have a great mic, but you can have a terrible interface and terrible preamps. And it would still not, you know, it would not efficiently pump the mic properly. So exactly. Like, so I had that plugged in and based on my knowledge of all the gear I thought, right i'm fucking covered uh um, i felt like a ninja i had a backpack <laughs> i had a, a roller bag on two wheels this is the only way i was doing it i was on a train to london from chester which is two hours and 20 minutes away right i've got about when i arrive i've got about an hour to get in it takes an hour to get through security because they actually do checks on you when you're there they have right. to x-ray everything the room is gorgeous. I will send you stills, in. I'll send you stills. Uh, yeah, in the I'm super proud of the cutaways. And it, the video turned out great. When I did the rec- audio, I had the Zoom set up in another room. I thought, right, can't be stressing about that. I'll yeah. double up. I've got a Rode Wireless Go set I've just bought. You know, nice, simple, uh, great gear. I love Rode stuff. Yeah, Rode's great. And I clipped it on the mic stand on the front. And then they've got the official mic, the... I think it was a Shaw MB, you know, the, the, the tiny one, the condenser one uh, for doing recordings like you would record music on. Like, you, it's just like, what do you think it's a 57 or a 58? Uh, it was really small. Yeah, you'd normally see uh, a singer sing into. On a yeah, it's an SM58 probably. In a, yeah, yeah and so they had that. SM57. So yeah. they had a good setup. So I knew based on that and seeing what was in the rack, it was great. Mm. But when the mic was taken off and it was on, I think it was on a wireless kit, there was some sort of combo it had. So mine was still clipped on the stand. I thought, shit, there's a roving mic situation. As soon as they went under the fucking old lights, you heard all this with the audio. Uh, uh, and I was going, what the fuck? But because he stood so close to the stand, all I did was, I thought, right, I know I can cut away. I'll walk into shot. 
bend the mic thing and use my little wireless go, which has a mic built in and then point it to him. And then when I walk back, I knew I wouldn't be in the edit. I'd be in the close up, but I wouldn't be in the wide because right. of where I set it up. So you, you know, you know what you're shooting. Yeah, yeah. And Oh my God, I was so happy. I wasn't part of that audio setup because people were getting really pissed off. And that, you know, people start to itch and get pissed off. Oh yeah. Uh, and then when I li- l- listen back to my audio, none of that shit. Nice. It was a little bit quiet. I, I massaged the audio a little bit. I was so happy. And that's why I, I think it was uh, early wedding experience and that experience. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm doing the right thing. That's, I think, what weddings will teach you too. And, uh, uh, you know, I talk about this with videographers and photographers all the time is you, you know, you can shoot a beer bottle and, you know, spray it with some mist and sit there and have a, you know, a, a you know, cinematographer pivot a light and stuff and, you know, turn the fog machine on and off for environment. But, when you're in a wedding, man, you got to think on your feet fast and you got to oh come up my with God, problem solving. Yeah. Like it's like the, it's the punk rock. You got to become a punk rock problem solver in that moment. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I actually thrive in that. I love yeah, that. Same. Me too, man. I love it. I love day it. before yeah, is the man. worst day like to be with me. Like when Vicky, my uh, fiance, when she knows I'm going on a shoot, she right. knows that things will work out okay because I can think on my feet. Mm-hmm. But the day before, I'm like, oh my God, I'm stressing <laughs> out. Yeah. Even though I'm fully prepped, it's sure. always the same. It just, oh, well, it's, I wish the I could. If, right? it's the what if scenarios of like, okay, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? But because your toolbox is so expanded now and like you can think on your feet like that. That's, and yeah. that, that's, again, it'll always come back to, why don't you guys do video? And I say, because audio. And then it's just, the conversation is over. All the videographers are like, oh yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so true. When you get asked that kind of thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, Audio's the worst. That's why when I have, I know the mic I'm putting, you can almost picture it like it's, you know when, this is a really obscure uh, reference, but you know the Xbox 360, the, you know the Connect when you see it at night or under uh, night vision, you can see all the dots. The, I'm the, sorry, the what? Uh, you I, know I, the Connect, uh, there's a, is it the Xbox 360 that has the little camera on top so you can, you can it's like the Nintendo Wii. So oh, I think I've heard of my, I just want you to understand that my video game knowledge goes as far as Super Nintendo. And then <laughs> that's after, that's after that, that. It's like I, yeah, Xbox I know of, but I think I know what you're talking about. Though. So like, these t- thousands of dots that are sent out and know, knows where your body is. Right. It's like my understanding of my audio gear on those tables. So I know my setup is going to capture all the audio I'll ever need. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like your understanding of how mic patterns, that kind of thing. You know exactly mm. how to act around these things. And uh, you still get, you still get, you're still a wash the day before you're all worried and you oh, get worked yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's the jitters too, though. Cause it's, again, you're shooting arguably the most important day of these people, people's lives next to like, you know, their birth. And then, you know, maybe some sort of family. Absolutely. It's, you know, you, you, the responsibility is just, it's, it's, it's huge. It's so. crazy, isn't it? So we're going to end uh, just on a very good note. We'll, s- I'm going to show you one of the animations. Oh, yeah. I'm excited um, to see. You guys so. must've got, some pretty cool i I was always and i was curious with the toronto one versus any any film fest really but you must have got there there, you i'm sure you've had to categorize because i always wonder how people would do this in a festival because you i'm sure that you're going to get some that's you know it's going to be you know here's some entry level stuff and then you're going to get some stuff that's pretty pretty darn good and then i'm sure you're going to get top-notch stuff and yeah uh, it must be interesting to have to like sort of um dissect and uh and sort of categorize i've always been curious about that kind of part of a so you're uh, this number doesn't mean anything. I totally agree. Like, like, we've chosen a, a comedy award mm. uh, because we've got so many comedies. It all depends on how many. I would always have dreamt of a horror category, but I don't know if we've got enough. <laughs> oh, I would have. Yeah. I, I thought about doing something like that, like horror. There was a couple do of. Do man, pl- please do it. We'll yeah. talk about it. I, lo- I love it. I love it. So let me find it. Um... I've been able to speak to people that have been in some of my TV sh- favorite TV shows and movies that have worked in the behind the scenes, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's been a really cool, like I spoke to someone about working on millennium, which is the series alongside the X-Files. So it's been, it's been a really interesting time for us. Are you, are you a heroes fan? Did you watch heroes? Uh, yeah, I love heroes, man. Yeah. You watch heroes are born. Are you in that? Yeah. No, uh, I've not seen it. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have one line. I have one line and I play a chef. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Yeah, that's so. My missus is gonna be very happy with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, like I said, I, you know, I was a, an actor for you know almost a decade and a half in Toronto, and 
did a lot of, I was on a Nickelodeon show for a few years back in 2005, 2008. Oh, cool. Um, I was a, did a really fun movie, HBO Canada, had some pretty heavy hitters in Emmanuel Shriki. She was from uh, Entourage and uh, Jason Ritter, um, John Ritter's son. They were in this movie. I just had wow. a little bit of fun. That's very oh, cool. It's, it's, yeah, you can. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's been a fun career. Um, I did a couple of stints on this little this is a kid show called Odd Squad. It's this like um, they solve problems with math, and they it's like it's kind of this fun little kid sort of. Uh, That's a very positive message, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It, you know, you wouldn't think that you could you, you wouldn't even realize a show could be based around it, but they use they they use mathematic problem mathematical problems to solve cases, and they're you know they're they're always on the job and. I got a couple of actor roles in that too. And, um, oh, very cool stuff. So Let yeah, me just check my camera barely one sec. Yep. I'm surprised my light's been going on this long. It's just a battery powered light. I didn't think it was going to yeah, go. I'm, st I'm still recording. Thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Worst case scenario, the zoom's recording anyway. So that's not a problem. Uh, so you should have seen me day one when I recorded the first podcast with this guy from Bordeaux in France. Uh, the stress level I had audio recorder here and everything. So <laughs> like a backup, backup to the backup. Oh <laughs> my God. Yeah. It's like, it's like you're planning to be on a submarine. <laughs> you know, there's uh, redundancies in like on a spaceship or something. So I'm going to share, this is a uh, called things a fly can do in isolation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. UK based animation. And he did, this is his first animation. He's a student in the UK. So let me show you that. Oh yeah. A friend of mine. Have you seen justice league? Of course, yeah. And they got this. Uh, so cut, she, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I've not spoke to my friend who's in it. She's got four lines of dialogue in the film. She's the Russian mother in the house nice. that the Flash saves. And she was the person that told me six years before anyone else of what Kevin Spacey was like. Oh. She worked at the old Vic where he was the, the main guy. Mm. And she said to me, there's going to be at least 20 people that come out about Kevin Spacey. She uh. told me this six years before it came out. Uh, wow. Because I went to see England versus Poland because she's Polish and she, uh, England versus Poland in the UK. And because there was a special bond in the UK between the Polish and the English because Polish uh, fighter pilots fought in the Battle of Britain. And in the Battle of Britain, you would always think British pilots, RAF, but there's Polish fighters. So during this ceremony, England versus Poland in this World Cup match in, in London, the Polish fans were mixed with the English. It was a real special moment you hardly see. And then the next day we had a few drinks and she told me about Spacey six years before anyone else knew about it. Oh my. Oh my God. And it was right. I texted her saying, you were right. I said, yeah. And she said, wait, wait for a few more. There's going to be about 30 in total. What, what happened? About 30 people came out about it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, can you see my, no, you can't see that yet. Screen one, share audio. Share. You should see a spinning wheel on a black screen. Yep. Got her. Yep. Nice. Okay.
Nice. So there's uh, some interesting choices. And I spoke to Ollie, who's only like 17, something like that. And I'm like some very mature uh, choices in terms of where your focus is, shot choices, composition, that kind of thing. So, yeah, man, there's there's some real talent worldwide and um, in Canada especially. We, for our festival, we've, we've been very lucky that we've had the knock-on effect of what the guys, uh, Stephen Mann was doing, the ISFF, mm. We've had a very positive knock on, especially for your film as well. Like your films, all oh, right, I'll kind of rework that and, and launch in the UK. So mm-hmm. yeah, thanks, man. And we really appreciate being on the podcast as well. Oh, it's been my pleasure, Alex. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited. It was the is the thirtieth, right? I think is that you guys uh, are no twentieth. Twentieth, okay. Yeah, we put some extra pressure on ourselves. We didn't want to let it drag on past the thirtieth or past the end of the month because we didn't think it was fair on people that have submitted and it's such a long process anyway. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. So, I mean, we're, 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 you know, kind of days away here. That's a yeah, fantastic a week on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> next, yeah. next week, the chap who's doing the edit on the, the, the main thrust of the video, mm. I'll check in with him tomorrow. And if he's not done that, then uh, I'll be doing all of it. You know what I mean? So you can imagine that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cause we want to do it the right way. And especially when we've had such uh, a monumental influx of films and, the uh the showreel of of we're going to include some of the showreel stuff of the director's duo in the next couple of days for our new judge then if we get if we get a couple of more judges for like guest judges then we're going to be ecstatic so we just want people to have a an idea of what these people have done and the two judges like vance burberry and the director's duo I obviously can't pronounce their surnames because they've got some <laughs> crazy surnames. So that all that news will be uh, effective. And we want people to realize that it's what they've done is really meant a lot to us, sending them to us. And then that's why I made such a good point, uh, made, made a point about your film is that you've, you cater that to the UK and I, I love the fact that you've done that. So yeah, Ian, thank you very much, mate. That's uh, it's wonderful to speak with you and hopefully speak with you in the, soon in the future because you've been a, a fantastic guest on the podcast, man. Anytime, brother. I look forward to it and uh, look forward to all the films and, and the fest. And awesome. we'll send you, we're going to send out the laurels after we close as well. So if you want to add that to the one that's on the TV, that you, oh. you're more than welcome to. Oh, that, just that thing. Yeah, no problem. I would... <laughs> I'd be honored. I'd be honored. Yeah, man. Awesome, man. So, uh, yeah, say hello to your wife for me. And I think uh, if you can send me a link to your kind of wedding company, that yeah, absolutely. this, this uh, podcast will be seen by a lot of Canadians as well. So any little help we, I know you've got a lot of weddings on it's next year, but any little help we can be to, you know, progress uh, work, that kind of thing. We're very happy to do that as well. And anything you want us to show past the point of the 20th, on the festival we're showcasing our filmmakers not just by their films but their work outside of things as things get better for everyone amazing in the interim um you should as a filmmaker you should check out that video by the band walk off the earth i'll be there you should check out that video because that's that's my favorite acting in it and um it's a fantastic song great great single one of their it was a chart topper single for them um in many countries so check that out and uh yeah, man, uh, it's been a it's been a blast. I had a great time chatting with you, brother. It's awesome. Yeah, top man, and uh, keep on rocking, man. All right. And too. oh yeah, the best compliment. Your audio is excellent, by the way, on your film. Ah uh, yes, thank you. I love yeah, it. I should have said that straight away. <laughs> but it was, and that's something we didn't talk about. What I'll probably email you about your audio as well because it was really clean, man. And I, I it was kind of seamless, and I didn't necessarily think about it. Uh, that's the best thing, you know. Like that's the best thing, yeah. If, if you're not thinking about it, it doesn't yeah. take because yeah. There's one or two films like uh, an actor called Declan. I can't remember his surname. He's based in Toronto. His films, very his performance is amazing, and his wife's first time in it. But just some of the cuts, the audio. There's a little bit of a couple of technical issues, but I d- I didn't necessarily hold that against anyone. But yeah, yours is one of uh, the better sounding ones, man, for sure. One of I hate man. I I get. It, I just get stoked hearing that. I, it's, that's awesome, man. Thank you so yeah. much. I, I appreciate it. So we'll keep in touch, man. And if you want to send me a headshot or not necessarily a headshot, a photo you prefer, as you've probably seen the posters of some of the other guys we've uh, and girls we've uh, advertised about their, uh, their episode in advance, we'd love to uh, receive that. So you can send that on Instagram or on to the email account. Yeah, I'll just toss you an email there. And then anything you guys have advertisement-wise and you, if you need help, let me know. I'm... I'm more, I'd be more than honored to help, you know, um, 
you know, help promo and all that good stuff on my socials. I, 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 I got off Instagram there for about a week cause I needed a, a Deep, yeah. I, I, I needed a free, I needed a decompress as I think a lot of people did, but, um, and I, and I'm actually trying to stay away and if it's business wise and work wise and art artistic wise, I'm into it, but I've been trying to keep personal life low on that kind of stuff. So, but I mean, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I think you guys are doing a fantastic job and I, you know, again, anything I can do to help, help big it up. And all I appreciate stuff. that. And I'm on the same, we're on the same wavelengths. I'll give you a fist bump if I could, because yep. the social media <laughs> stuff is, uh, is, is just purely about work for me now. Or it's about the flooring. If you follow my personal account, it's just about the flooring of hot dogs. So it's not only about that. So Ian, you've been a great guest, man. And uh, keep on rocking, dude. Thanks, brother. You too. All right. See you soon. Later. Bye-bye.